the painting process begins. Hurrah. Only had to do a little bit of extra filling, thank goodness, uh, with the putty on some few missing spots. And then a coat of black primer. And then I went ahead and also airbrushed on some Vallejo Camo Black Brown. And the reason why I did that is because uh, this guy is going to be mostly done in brown tones. We have skin, we have leather, we have fur, we have wood. All that can be uh, shaded with brown. So it's easier if we just start off with that color for everything. And doing the skin first because that's the most important. And I want something uh, a slightly off color tone. Uh, I'm going for something a little yellowish, a little green. We'll see what happens. Uh, beginning with some Vallejo English uniform, which is a nice yellow green color, very ochre y. So we're just cu covering that using a nice big brush for it and getting a decent coat, and then we'll move on from there. Uh, we're going to be painting this guy. I don't want to say not carefully, but um, let's say speed is somewhat essential. Let's go for that. We got our base coat down and now I'm adding a little shade via a wash. And this is a mix of military green, which is a very dark drab green. And I have it mixed with um, Vallejo, one moment. Olive brown, which again, it's more on a, a brown side of a drab green. And I'm putting it on as a, as a heavy wash, uh, mainly because, well, again, we're trying to do this in a relatively short amount of time. And I got a little glaze medium in here so I can be a little bit sloppy with the wash. Uh, main concern right now is we don't want it to dry with bubbles. Uh, however, we're gonna just put on this coat and then I'm gonna go back and we're going to reapply via dry brush the English uniform. And this is going to be our, this is one shade of, well, shading. And we're going to be adding more to it, but this is kind of a, a spot shade and it'll just get everything prepped and in place. Gives us a little bit of different color going on with our piece. And the other way to apply this, if this was a smaller figure, I would have applied this um, much more precisely and more with a layering method, but we got a lot of skin to do here, so I'm going this route. So you can see here, this is starting to dry. We're getting a bit of a green tone to the skin, and that'll be reduced once we go back and off camera probably, I'll just reapply our English uniform, and then we'll start the harder stuff then. So the wash is totally dry, and now we're kind of doing a reapplication of the base coat. And I kind of like the look that the wash gave the skin, so I decided to add a little bit of military green to our English uniform. And because the wash darkened the English uniform so much, this is actually lightening it up, uh, even though we're adding something that uh, wasn't in the base coat. And it's giving it a skin a nice kind of unhealthy hue. Now, in case if you're wondering why we I didn't put down that wash color and then just dry brush English uniform over it, I did the base coat and the wash, uh, was because it's the application process, since it's different, even though uh, you're using the same colors, how you apply them can affect the uh, outcome. So if we put the the wash mixture, the, uh, what was it, the olive brown and the military green down and then dry brush the English uniform over that, uh, the effect would not be, uh, the, the effect of the green and brown would be much stronger than it was putting the heavy wash over the English uniform, if that makes sense. In case you're wondering. So you can see we're doing a very careful dry brush here. No brush strokes, even though we're on a smooth surface because we are dancing our brush over the surface. And then eventually we're gonna get to some, a, a bit more detail painting on the skin here at some point, because there's so much skin on this model, we wanna make that a priority. Where are we gonna go from here though? I don't know, let's find out once I'm done. 
Doing one more dry brush layer, I added some green ochre to our mix. So we got three colors going on now, the English uniform, the military green, and the green ochre to start to lighten up a little bit. And you can see here, again, dry brushing. If we do it nice and carefully, just caress the miniature with the brush, we won't end up with a bunch of brush strokes because we have enough of the paint removed from the brush. If you're getting streaks, it means you got too much paint in the brush. And this is just a, this is a subtle dry brush. Just adding a little bit of color here. Don't want to add too much. We're not doing big old uh, crevices here. We got a fairly flat skin surface. And again, subtle change is going to give us a, a subtle transition of highlights. We're burning through a lot of paint here because this is such a big guy. I'm going to keep doing this and we'll get to a point where we're going to start adding a little, <clears throat> excuse me, a little texture to the skin. I just don't know uh, when I want to start doing that. It'll be soon though. Beginning to add a little bit more detail to the skin. Once again, same color combination, just with more of our lightener highlight color added, the currently green ochre. And you can see I'm adding a little texture to the skin. I want to do something to it. There's so much skin here. Uh, we got to do something than just plain old dry brushing. So just adding a small amount of texture. And I have the paint very, very thin here. So the texture, it looks a, a lot more prominent when it's wet. But if we go back here, you can see it's very subtle on this side. And we're going to build up on this. We don't want to blow our whole wad on the first coat. But uh, that's the process. And basically, I, I want to do this because I want to give the skin a little bit, um, not texture like it's rough and bumpy, more it's like dirty. You know, maybe all those little nooks and crannies in the skin that are holding on to dirt. So. We're going to keep on this process now, smaller and smaller area, lighter color each time. And it's going to be fairly subtle because we have to paint thin. So uh, that's the process right now. And now we got an upper torso to paint. The highlight process is continuing. Now I've abandoned our green color and we're just using English uniform and green ochre. Uh, heavy on the green ochre. I already did. I did one stage uh, between the last one that I did off camera. But you can see here, lightening things up, getting a little bit away from the green. Uh, and this color I'm doing much heavier on the face region to lighten up the face. Because if you if you do extra highlights in the face, that gives you a lot of emphasis on the face when you're viewing it. But for the rest of the body. You're once again, just working with our texture pattern. Give them a rough skin look. And we're getting close to the end here. We'll do a few more. And then we'll also start adding some glazes and whatnot to our little gargant. We're gonna start adding some more color soon. We're doing one final highlight. I've added beige to our mix. And this is this is going in a few places for highlights, uh, but what I'm also trying to do is lighten up a few areas, not for just plain highlighting reasons, but we're gonna add some color after this. And adding color, via glazes or whatnot is a lot easier on lighter color surfaces. So I'm putting this highlight, quote unquote, in a few places, but I'm also concentrating it on those areas where we're going to add the color. So like in the, uh, the face, mostly we're going to be adding some color around the knees, color or discoloration, whatever you want to call it. So we are adding this a little bit more extreme here because that's going to pick up those colors that we're going to do next. So 
Just to give you an idea how we are so far. We got some texture, very subtle texture on our giant. Very easy to do on the legs, a little bit harder to do around the chest region because we have more muscles there and uh, brighter highlights on the face. I think I'm gonna go actually go back and do a little bit more brightness on the face to bring it out uh, just a wee bit more. So, and it's only been about two hours, not bad. Okay, we're finally on to the color stage. Spicing up our skin tone. And like I said, we lightened up the skin tone so it easier takes this color. And I was planning to use something a bit more flesh tone. However, because of the dark skin, I had to go a little bit darker with this. I'm um, using Game Color Tan, which is a very ruddy brown, as you can see. It's basically like a terracotta color, almost a little lighter than that. And it's going on fairly light. It's not quite a glaze. It's close to it. It's more like a very thin layer. But because we lightened up those areas, again, it picks up the color and then the recessed areas, it doesn't pick up as much color. So it uh, makes this a little bit easier to apply. I think I'm actually going a little bit overboard on my application here. I need to spread this out a little bit. You see, we're gonna add a little color to the face. We'll do a little on the ears here. I got this a little bit thicker than I normally do. Normally I build this up a bit slower, but again, darker skin tone and we got basically a monster here. So I think I can get away with using a bit uh, heavier coat. And see, just add a little bit to the head there, makes things more interesting. I'm also gonna do the hands and the elbows and knees. And then I'll figure things out from there, see if we need to put a highlight on this or not. Um, then we probably need to go back and add a little bit of uh, color to the uh, shadows as well, but we will see. We're getting close. I went a little crazy with the tan, actually started adding that all over the place, essentially, uh, over pretty much all the highlights, because I really liked adding that pink tone everywhere. And so that means for the color on the face, I gotta up the ante a little bit. Very subtly, some gory red. See, add some real nice color to the nose. Yeah, this is a very, very thin glaze. So I'm gonna be doing this in just a few spots. Basically nose, ears, and hopefully, like I said the other other time, uh, elbows and knees. And I really hope that's it, so I can move on to something else. Maybe a little on the cheeks. Maybe there too. And we added some color for the highlights. Now I'm adding some color and a little bit of shade to the well shade regions. Going back to our original military green, using it, um, well, not straight, but not mixing the the brown that I did before. And I mixed it with gory red and some stormy blue, which is colors are colors I've already used on this guy in various places. Um, already added a few other colors here and there. We did the teeth, the lips, added a little color, a little blue. That's where the blue comes in uh, underneath the eyes. Um, doing a lot of very small things. I'm not going to tell you about every single one because I may just add some spots, you know, freckles here and there with one color and maybe add a little spot of blue or a little spot of red. Just trying to go over the big things for you so this video doesn't go on forever. But so we're coloring in the shade here and then we'll do one more coat. I'll just tell you right now. Uh, the, the gory red and stormy blue on its own without the green here added. This shade here is mainly to, it's mainly to darken the shade where I need it. And then that mix will be to add a little bit of color in the recesses. You can see right here I already did some before I decided to go back with the current mixture. It's all coming together pretty fast. 
just about done with what I consider the skin portion. That includes teeth, eyes, hair, nails, and all that. I'm sure there's more to do that I'm forgetting right now, but anyway, we're working on the hair. And I started off with English Uniform and Desert Yellow. And the reason why I picked English Uniform is to blend the hair into the skin, because he's got, you know, this deeply recessed hairline. So it's want to make sure he's not wearing, looks like he's wearing a wig, so we mix in some of the flesh color to begin with. Uh, and then I started using, like I said, the desert yellow, but I decided to go a little bit more yellow, switched over to pale yellow and English uniform for highlight. And whenever you're doing shades and you know, base coats, highlights, you don't necessarily have to use the exact same colors. I realized pale yellow would work better as a highlight color, so I just started using that instead of the desert yellow and we're gonna do add a little white here or beige or something doesn't really matter too much what and our techno Viking gargant is uh, forming up really nicely right now isn't he the new Alan Hale action figure he sits down he snacks he sits down again he farts he drives he comes with his own lunch action Alan Hale and action Alan Hale's got soul separate Do -do 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 